Hello friends and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. This is the second episode um, that I'm making of my 10 furniture thrifted flip slash trash to treasure projects. Pretty much all the stuff I love to do. Um, I'm, I'm starting to create these videos where I compile 10 projects of mine together and um, that way when people are new to my channel they can look back at my past projects or if you have been watching my channel for a while you might have missed an episode or um, a project that I've done in the past and I just wanted to get them all together and compile it into some videos of 10 projects each and um, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below but for this first project I just had this cute little nightstand that I got for free somebody was giving it away and I thought that it would be fun to do a cute little makeover I am currently redecorating my daughter's room in a princess theme and so this is in there but I just painted it gray and then painted the knob silver and it gave it this glamorous look which is perfect for her room now project number two I'm sorry this video was at night for this part of the video so it's kind of a not very good quality video just right here in the beginning so stick through it'll get better <laughs> but I started with a, um, a dark brown gel stain and then I'm going to go over it with a white lime washing glaze and this um, gel stain that I use takes a long time to dry and of course all of these videos I have the uh, longer videos linked in the description box so if, there, if there's any questions that you have over any of the processes that I do during some of these projects then go to the description box and click on the link I will have these all numbered so you'll know which number project goes to which link that way you can see the detailed process where I explain how I did all of these things in this video this lime wash is like one of my favorite products to use by the way <laughs> I use it on a lot of different things and I think it's really versatile and it can do so many different types of looks and this project like many of my projects I was just winging it and I wanted to try a different finish that I was making up as I was going and it turned out really well which I'm glad because it took me quite a while um, if any of you have worked with gel stain before you'll know that gel stain takes a really long time to dry Okay, so I didn't show the part where I painted the bottom half gray because I already showed me painting the other piece of furniture with that same gray. So now I'm just going to go over it with a dark wax. And this product uh, makes for a really pretty finish, but not a very durable finish. And I figured that out after doing this project. I also, if I could go back and change something about this project, I would have sanded the top of this piece so that the paint would have been on there just a little bit stronger. I'm thinking maybe that would have helped this finishing wax seal it better. I don't know, but it didn't seal itself very well and there were some chips in the paint. Um, so it ended up needing to be recovered in a, um, a water-based polyurethane. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a minute to remember that. But it still was very beautiful. The finish itself looked really neat and I will definitely be repeating a process similar to this in the future. But I'll give you a close-up of it in just a second. Oh and of course I spray painted the same knob color and everything as I did that first project. I just did it silver again and I was just on a roll with this style. <laughs> but look at that how it turned out. Isn't that really neat? I literally just made that up as I was going and it turned out beautiful. And I was super happy with the finished product here. And also, number three was something that I got for free as well. I got it from my mom. I'm not sure. I think this was maybe something she had from like the, the 2000s when everybody had that same dinette set. But I'm not too sure if that's what it is or not. But anyways, it was out on her back patio and had gotten damaged just from being out there and I gave it a facelift and it was super simple and easy and you'll see that I just literally like cleaned it, spray painted it, put a, uh, a new seat on it and it looked amazing and beautiful. But this color gray that I'm using is just, um, I believe it's called granite gray and I use this spray paint for so many different projects. The Rust-Oleum 2 times coverage spray paint is my go-to. It really covers amazingly well. Now for the seat part, I just had these foam squares 
that I bought, I think, in a pack of five from Walmart. And then I attach it with some spray glue that is done by Loctite, although there are other brands that work just as well, and you can also find this at Walmart. The reason I spray glue down the padding is because when you're covering it with fabric, you don't want the padding to slide and move. This fabric was from Hobby Lobby. It was $8.99. Really heavy duty, good quality fabric. That's usually their very expensive ones that come in those big long rolls. But um, this one was on clearance. Always check the clearance section before you check the regular section because sometimes you can find exactly what you need there. So all I'm going to do now is just reattach the seat back on with the same screws that it came with and it will be done. I swear anybody could do this. And all I used was a T50 staple gun to attach the fabric on. That's the kind of staple gun I always use, although someday in the future I will have an electric staple gun because my hands hurt from that gun so bad. <laughs> I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> but ta-da! What do you think of this fabric? I loved this fabric. I actually sold that bench. Okay, number four. This one I got for free as well. So this piece... I posted on a Facebook group saying, hey, is anybody throwing away a dining table? Because I wanted to make a dining table into my coffee table for my house. And um, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm constantly changing things in my house. And if you are new to my channel, let me just tell you, don't get used to anything <laughs> because I am constantly changing my furniture and decor and everything. So if you see a video where something looks totally different, like later on in this video my dining room is it's an old video of my dining room and it's literally I don't have my dining room in that room anymore <laughs> but for this table I just sanded it down um, I cut the legs down shorter because it's obviously going to be a coffee table and um, you just make sure that you cut each leg at the exact same length so that way you don't have a wobble on the table and then you attach the legs back on and this table was so heavy it was ridiculous but I use my paint sprayer. A lot of you were asking about this paint sprayer. This paint sprayer is a really cheap one from Harbor Freight. I think it was like less than $20. The thing about this paint sprayer is you have to clean it very well after every use or else it will get all clogged up and stop working. But the good thing is it's super cheap. So if you ever do forget to clean it out, like you just get busy and you forgot to clean it out, which obviously I've done before, that's why I know, <laughs> it's really cheap to replace it. So you don't feel as bad as if you would have forgotten to clean out a hundred dollar paint sprayer. See, this living room is like not even my same living room anymore. <laughs> I don't have those couches anymore. I changed my rug and I don't use this coffee table anymore, which is hilarious watching this. Okay, number five. This piece I sold and it was funny because I put up this YouTube video and got a message from my niece who's an adult. Might sound weird saying my niece, you think like a child. No, she's an adult. But she messaged me right away and um, she was moving into her first real house and her fiance or boyfriend, I'm not sure if, if they've gone through that stage yet, but they um, are moving in together and they, she wanted to make sure that the house was really nice for when he got home. He was on deployment at the time, so she wanted this sign for her house and um, she offered me $20 for it and I took it. But this finish that I did on here was like a faux wood finish. I got the shutter itself, I think, from like a scrap pile on trash day. <laughs> and all I did was do light coats of this brown paint that I mixed with random paints that I had at home on the time at the time. And um, I made sure to finish each shutter piece with a straight... Um, simple up and down brush stroke at the end so that way the lines would look like a wood grain. If, I don't know if that makes sense to you but uh, that's how I created this faux wood look. I actually did this piece for a look for less with Yami from the Latina Next Door and that's a really fun challenge that she does every month that she hosts and what you do is you find something high-end and you make a cheaper version of it so I got inspired from a sign that was at Kirkland's. I think it was like $60, something crazy like that. And I ended up making this one for super cheap, less than 20 bucks or around that. I'm pretty sure it was less than $20, but all I had to buy was the greenery and the letters, everything else I already had or got for free. This greenery was on clearance after Christmas. I highly, highly recommend buying your florals right when they go on clearance for after holiday times because 
the Christmas stuff in general can be reused for many different um, times of year. Like you can use it for spring, summer, all that good stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this gluing part because it's pretty self-explanatory. You're literally just gluing the leaves onto the shutters and the stems as well. And hot glue is your best friend for projects like this. Here's the finished product. I hope you guys really like this one because I sure did. Project number six. Wow, I can't believe we're on six already. So this is a really old video and I believe I was actually pregnant in this video with my son and he is already uh, 10 months old now. But this canvas had Sharpie all over it and I couldn't get it off. I tried to. It was a really cute painting and it was obviously something that was painted of Arizona which is where I'm from and I love Arizona but I couldn't save it so instead of saving the painting that's on the canvas I decided to just save the canvas. So I painted over it with Waverly black chalk paint and it's not chalkboard paint although you can use black chalk paint as chalkboard paint. It does work. So I painted it all black and then I took this ribbon that I got on clearance for $1.50. So here we are, the project's only costing me $1.50. And I tied it around the piece of canvas and made a cute little bow on it. I'm not a bow expert, but I did do a pretty good job on this one. <laughs> I feel a little proud of myself, I guess. And I also am super obsessed with Buffalo Check. So this is something that was perfect for my home decor, although I did end up selling it. A lot of these projects that I do on here, I decorate my house with it for a while and then I get tired of it and I sell it. <laughs> but now I'm going to just look at some fonts on Pinterest and find something that speaks to me that I feel looks pretty and I'm just going to eyeball it and draw it on this canvas. And I used a chalk pen. It's kind of like a pastel texture. It's very like smooth. I don't know how to explain it, but I just looked at how they did it on Pinterest on a picture and then freehand drew it. And if you guys are interested in doing freehand calligraphy like this, you should definitely go back and watch this video because I explain it in a lot more detail in the video so you can see how I did it. It was actually really easy and I have bad regular handwriting, so if you have bad handwriting, there's still hope for you. <laughs> But now I'm just going to go back and fill in the calligraphy style part of it. And the good part about using a chalk pen is if you mess up, you can just take like a Q-tip and get it wet and wipe off the area of chalk that, you know, went outside the lines or didn't look right or whatever it may be. And if you mess up the whole entire thing, then you can just erase the whole entire thing. Or if you do it in paint, you can always paint over it. But that would be a little harder. Ta-da! <laughs> Here it is. So excuse the poor camera quality. These are old videos and I was using my old phone and it didn't have the best camera. I was just, you know, getting really into YouTube at the time. So it didn't have the greatest camera. All right. This project is going to be, oh, you know, I didn't even put the number on this one. Number seven, I believe. So for project number seven, this was a total trash to treasure project. I literally used trash and made it into something that was really cute. So I had cardboard and I had a bunch of paper bags on hand and I really wanted to find some crafts that I could do with out of paper bags because I just feel like that texture and color can be really pleasing to the eye. I don't know why. I'm just really into that brown natural color. So I cut out a bunch of leaves and I turned it into a wreath on that old piece of cardboard that I cut the circle out of. If you've seen this video already, you already know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen this video already, you might be like, wow, I'm gonna try that because we're all in a situation right now where we just have to use what we have to get crafty and for the artistic type of people like me, you just like have to craft things. There's just a need and if you aren't crafting, you're like stressed out and sad. <laughs> well, at least that's how it is for me. I have to make things. I don't know what it is or why. I don't know, but I have to just make things. It's just part of who I am. So if you have paper bags and a piece of cardboard or even construction paper and a big piece of cardboard, I know y'all are shopping on Amazon right now. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys got a lot of boxes in your houses. Um, you could easily make this project. You could do it in any size. 
You could do it in different shapes. You can do it with different colored pieces of paper. You could even paint your paper bag first before you put it all, cut it all out and put it all on your wreath form. There's so many different ways that you could make this your own. And that's something that's important to me is that you understand that you do not have to make things exactly how I make them in my video. I'm just trying to give you some inspiration. Even if you just see one part of this video and think, oh, I'm going to do something like that. It doesn't have to be anything like what my final product is like. As long as you find something that you like out of it and go and create and be happy. That's what's most important. But this is how mine turned out. <laughs> if you like it, let me know in the comment section down below. Oh, you know what? This is number seven. Gosh, apparently I can't count. Maybe I gave you more projects than I thought. So number seven, apparently, is this ladder shelf. And it was so cheap, only $3. I got super lucky finding this thing at the thrift store. And of course, remember, all of these projects are bought previously before any of this virus situation happened so no need to worry and I also am showing here that I did disinfect this piece I use a product called microban which actually kills bacteria for up to 24 hours after you use it which I think is really neat and something interesting you guys might want to try is something I've been doing which is whenever I have to go to the grocery store or any kind of store in general I have been spraying down myself and my clothes with the microband so that way if I am exposed to that virus while I am out, it will not survive on my clothes or my skin or anything that's exposed. Um, it is kind of a strong smelling substance. It, it smells a lot like orange and citrus, but uh, I'm not sure if it's great for you to be breathing it in, but it's a little less scary than catching this virus. So that's what, that's what I do. If you're not doing that, that's cool too, but just thought that maybe some of you out there might be interested in hearing about that. So. This color is actually the same color that I painted my fireplace in my house, and um, I really like it. I use it on a lot of stuff. It's pretty much the exact same color as the stain I used on my lower kitchen cabinets, too. And here it is. I staged it all cute just for the video, but now it is actually in my daughter's room holding all her books. <laughs> I tell you, I'm changing everything all the time in my house. Number eight. This little window I did pretty recently, and it... I feel like I spent like five or ten dollars on it at an antique mall. I know I bought it at an antique mall for sure, but it had this old hardware on it and I got that all off and uh, I made sure to be really careful not to rip the wood up too much and then I go ahead and sand it down with my orbital sander. This is also from Harbor Freight. Another thing that you can get super cheap, you don't need a ton of money for certain power tools like orbital sanders or uh, paint sprayers. This looking glass mirror spray that I used first is actually a little pricey. It's like $12 a can. So I highly recommend that when you get the chance, when we're able to go shopping again, you buy it with a coupon at Michael's with like a 40% off coupon. So I have gotten the mirror part done, flipped it back over, and I just use a razor blade to clean up the paint. And um, it really works really well. It works a lot faster and easier than taping things off, which is something that I don't like doing. And I feel like paint tape is a waste of money and time. So I hardly ever use paint tape on anything, even painting inside my house. I just either um, use the paintbrush to make a perfect line or I, when I'm painting things like this, I use a razor blade <laughs> to wipe off the excess paint that I get. But here's the finished product of that. The mirror finish was not perfect. I had to make do with what I had because of the situation we're in right now. So the silver paint on the back was a little bit too hazy. It could have used a couple more coats of that mirror finish. Number nine, this is one of my favorite projects that I've done. I got this little play kitchen from a yard sale. The woman who I bought it from um, was saying that her father built it and that she played with it a ton as a kid. And as you can see, it definitely shows that it was well, well loved. And that's totally okay. I feel like we need to let our kids play with their toys. We need to let them use them and beat them up and you know leave their mark on them, and that's totally okay. And in this case, it's really neat because you can have that story and those memories in the piece. But it does need work, and I did need to fix a few things, so. Thankfully, all the pieces were still there, and I was able to put these drawers back together. 
her father had built it very well and had tried to repair it several times, it looks like. So to me, that's just a really beautiful story when you see that, that the, they even tried repairing it over and over again. That just goes to show you how much they loved the piece and how much they used it, that they even took the time to fix it over and over so that it could still be used and played with. But I glued it, used my handy dandy nail gun and um, put it all back together. Now I'm just going to use my caulking gun with some regular white caulking in there to uh, mimic a wood filler. I didn't have enough wood filler for this so again using what I had I had caulking so I used the caulking to fill in the cracks and, <coughs> and to just um, give that wood finish on the front a more soft feeling to it. it. It was really torn up so I had to do what I could. And now I'm going to just paint it with its first coat of chalk paint. I just got the regular cheap Home Depot chalk paint, painted the first coat on of chalk paint when I was inside the house. The chalk paint was a great um, adherent, I guess. It, was, it sticks to everything, so it's good to start with chalk paint. Then I did use painter's tape for this. Here's why. I use spray paint. You can't really get a perfect edge with spray paint unless you use tape. So this is a good time that you do use painter's tape. Pretty much the only time that you use painter's tape. <laughs> but now I'm going to mimic my kitchen and paint the top half white and the bottom half in that same gray that my cabinets are, my fireplace is, my bookshelf now is. And then I spray painted the knobs just like I did in the beginning of the video, made them silver. And now I'm just going to pre-drill some holes and stick some hooks in the side so that my kids can hang their little kitchen accessories on there. They were so excited to use this piece that they were right there behind the camera waiting, saying, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? <laughs> they actually use Play-Doh and pretend that they are doing um, baking competitions and creating like cake decorations out of Play-Doh. That's their favorite thing to do right now, all because of that show on Netflix called Nailed It. They're really into that. And in the original video, you can see how I made that lemon sign right there. I used fabric and a canvas that was... Um, imperfect it had a little hole in it and I recreated something useful all right if you have gotten this far in the video for the last number 10 project I just want to say thank you so much for sticking through with me I know sometimes it's really hard to get time to actually watch a whole video like to sit down watch the video skip the ads because I'm pretty sure lots of you are skipping the ads <laughs> which is okay I do the same thing no worries but um, this project was my most recent one and it was a super simple one and I really enjoyed creating something that was really colorful. You'll see that this piece is super colorful when I'm done with it. And the first thing that I did was of course clean it, take it down to its um, bones I guess and tighten down all the screws and now I'm just going to give it some color. Like I said this piece is super colorful and I was really happy to do it. It's just something that I needed, you know, it's it's kind of these drab times right now. We can't go and do the things we want to do. We can't see and hug and hang out with our loved ones and friends. So I needed something to cheer me up and I had all the supplies to create something super colorful. It reminds me of something that would be outdoors, like on a patio and the colors also remind me of like, I don't know, like a parrot or some kind of beautiful bird. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds weird, but it did remind me of like some kind of cool tropical bird for some reason. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you agree that it has like some kind of tropical bird quality to it. My grandma used to collect tropical bird things like toucan stuff and parrots and things like that. She was really into Florida for a while there. And so this is like a blast from the past, this color scheme that I'm doing. It's something my grandma would have loved a long time ago. She even painted a mural of a beach scene, like a Florida beach scene in her bedroom. And we live in Arizona, so it was just really cool that she did that. But here it is. And thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'm so glad to have you. I have a lot of new friends here on my channel. And I hope that you guys enjoy my new content and stick around. And thank you so much for subscribing. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.